It is day number 11 of 30 GIMP tutorials. It's going to be a hair test day since you're going to learn how to change the color of hair in GIMP. So let's do it. All right, let's find an image to work with. If you want to use the same image I'm using, you can download it from a link in the description below. So find it, download it, and open it in GIMP. The first thing we want to do is duplicate this image layer by clicking on this icon right here. Next, let's go up to Colors and select Hue Saturation, and then drop the saturation down to minus 100 to convert it to black and white. Now I've mentioned in a previous tutorial, this is not my favorite method for converting to black and white. There are better, more creative options, and you can discover those in the description below. I've included a link to an article that shares my favorite methods for converting to black and white. So check that out. Let's go ahead and click OK here. And then we're going to colorize this image. We're going to go up to Colors and select Colorize. And we now have a new color for the hair as well as the entire image. We're going to target this color just on our hair, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And in case you're wondering, if you did watch the tutorial where I show you how to change colors of eyes, the process is similar, but I have a couple of extra tips to share with you as well. So we're going to click on this color box to select our color. I believe the original edit that I did was a purple color, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that color again. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then OK again. Now to remove the color from the image, we're going to come over here and click on our layer mask icon and we're going to select black and once you click add, it removes the color from that image layer. Now when working with layer masks, when you apply a black mask, it removes the edit applied and then to add the edit back exactly where you want it, you're going to paint with white. So let's grab our paintbrush tool, which can be located right here on your toolbar or with the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter P. And then make sure your foreground color here is set to white. We're going to increase our brush size to cover a larger area of hair. And I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to increase and decrease the size of the brush. And I have another tutorial that'll explain how to set that up. Now, when you begin painting, the hair turns the color you chose. How cool is that? Now, the one thing I would recommend is a soft edged brush. So if we come over here to the brushes panel, you wanna make sure you have one of these selected. I have 075 selected. And if you have a hard edged brush, you're not going to get very good results. So I recommend a soft edged brush and then just paint in the area where you want to apply the edit or the color to the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in and I'm not going to sit here and try and make this perfect. Otherwise we will be here all day. I just wanna share with you how to do this and then you can spend a little bit more time getting it right on your image. I'm going to grab my zoom tool with the letter Z so I can zoom in here because I did paint the color on her face right here and we need to get rid of that. So with the letter P, I'll get my brush back and I'm going to make it smaller. Now, if you don't have a scroll wheel, you can use the left bracket key to make your brush size smaller or the right bracket key to make it larger. Now to remove this purple from her face, we need to paint with black because remember, black removes, white adds. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to set our foreground color to black or just click right here to switch to black and white. Now, when we paint with black, it removes that edit or that color. Now, the one thing I like to do when I'm painting with a layer mask is I like to have, of course, one hand on the mouse and then the other hand on my keyboard next to the letter X so I can switch back and forth between white and black. It's a lot faster than coming over here and switching it from here every time I need to do it. Just remember, press the letter X. Now with white, I can paint again the color exactly where I want it. 
So the hair strand is getting smaller here, so I need to go with a smaller brush. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint along here. Now, if I wanna navigate over here to this side, I can hold down my space bar, and then I can click and navigate to another part of the image. And I'm gonna continue painting over here. And then the fun begins because we have all these stray hairs here and they're teeny tiny. So we have to go with a very tiny brush to get in here and make sure that the paint is being applied exactly where we want it. So for this one, I can go a little bit larger. Now, the one thing I would recommend for something like this is to lower the opacity of the brush because we have a lot of the background coming through. So we don't necessarily want to fill it in with 100% of the color. So in the tool options here, we're going to drop the opacity down to a level that works for our particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over here like this, and that tends to blend in a little bit better. I may want to go a little bit lower here because the background is a little bit more intense coming through here than it was over on this side. So this is the secret to coloring stray hairs. Now the color itself doesn't look all that natural yet. It's a very bright purple. And I think we need to change the blending mode to fix that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hold down my control, then my shift key, plus the letter J to zoom all the way out. Now before I change the blending mode, I'm gonna go ahead and begin painting in this area here but I want to increase the opacity back to 100%. Now for down here, I'm going to go ahead and paint with black and remove some of this so I can go with a lower opacity. As I get down here towards the tip of her hair, it's starting to blur out and blend in with her shirt a little bit. So I want to go with a lower opacity. So again, I'm just painting with black and white going back and forth to add and remove to help blend it in with her hair. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up again. I'm gonna get this last strand here and then we'll find a blending mode that will work for this image. You may need to find a different blending mode depending on your image. So again, I would spend a little bit more time with that. If we take a look at my original, I went through with a very small brush and I did all the individual stray hairs. So for this particular image, for the blend mode, I went with lighten only, and that helps blend in that color a lot better than without the blend mode. What do you think? All right, make sure you check out that playlist to the left to learn more about editing and retouching in GIMP. Make sure to subscribe as well. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.